where you as the board were at the time of executive session. I believe there was a pending motion. I think probably need for a restatement of that and then proceed from there, sir. So we are going to go ahead and entertain a motion again. Mr. Gardner? I, I believe there was a motion that was pending. That motion, if you would restate it, I yeah. believe it was for board staff's order, if I'm not mistaken, and there was a second on it. So um, I think the best thing to do is restate it and verify that that motion is still pending, and if the second remains effective or how you want to proceed, but you're going to have to do something with that because there is a second on board from a, a, a procedural standpoint. Okay, so there's a motion before us. Is the second still remain? I would draw a second. Okay, is there anyone else who would like to second the motion? Seeing no second, the motion fails. Are there any other motions? Mr. Chairman, I do have a motion. Please proceed. My motion would be that uh, with respect to um, the case in question, as to the penalties, that we issue a public reprimand, a suspension of the doctor's license for a period of five years, probated, 12 cycles of chart monitoring relating to billing, taking the JP exam, 72 hours of continuing medical education divided between record keeping, diligence, risk management, and ethics, proper ownership disclosure of the pharmacy, a, re a revision of the consent forms, a $40,000 penalty, plus $20,000 restitution, I believe it was patient G. And that would be my motion to conclude. And just I, be, before a second on that, Dr. Zafron, I, clarification. Um, I believe was there a, an informed consent element of that? There was. Did I not say that? Yeah. yeah. Did. Well, just to be clear on it, how did you want that to to be done? And let me let me tell you why I ask you that, Mr. Denton. When you say an informed consent, what has been done historically in a couple of cases is that you ask for the revised consent forms to be reviewed. Normally, it's by the medical director to be sure they contain the disclosures that are are. are necessary or you believe are necessary as a board and then the other requirement is that those you make sure that they're in the patient's chart which I probably as a matter of course is done but again you would just say that kind of as a belt and suspenders so it, those would be something that would be verifiable that the patients were being properly consented if that is what you were really intended. The, the revised consent forms that I'm speaking of would be approved for the Texas Medical Board and be a part of the patient's files. So I, I thought that went without saying, but thanks for the clarification. Well, I think it does, but again, for the purposes of, of the respondent, Dr. Brzezinski, his lawyers, the people here, new board members, want to be clarify that that's our standard way of doing uh, these consent forms as you put forward. I don't think some folks have heard that before. So again, it's a little more explanatory than we might otherwise do. So, I think the form of the motion has to be to adopt the yeah. No, it, that could be a, no, it would be findings of fact and conclusions of law with Mr. Dent putting in new terms. I second that motion. Before we second the motion, let's make sure that the motion is clear the way it needs to be. Go ahead, Dr. Holliday. I, I was actually just about to say that, and I think that we need to, as a board, adopt the findings of fact and conclusions of law as presented in the proposal for a decision. And then we can discuss the, the um, order itself and the sanctions within the order. Thank you, Dr. Holliday. And, and let me revise or explain my motion. It did include the adoption of the findings of fact and conclusions of law found in the order. And what I have proposed is the proposed penalty as a result of those findings of fact. And conclusions. Which would be appropriate because you are not adopting the board staff's order, you are adopting the findings of fact and conclusions of law, and you're putting forward new recommended sanctions, correct, Mr. Denton? Absolutely correct. All right, correct. that's thank a clean you. motion, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion before us. Is there a second? Okay, now I second. That's okay, right. thank you, Dr. Webb. Discussion? A, a, a bit of clarification, does the chart monitor, I mean not the chart monitoring, the uh, continuing education 
that you're proposing, Mr. Denton, does that include the Colorado Physicians Education Program? You know, I had not included that in my motion, although I would consider an amendment to my motion if that's something that someone wants to bring up. I would, I would consider that as an amendment to include the uh, CPAP course uh, as stated in the staff's uh, order, original order. So is so that in addition to, this, to the 72 hours of continuing education that I proposed? Yes. Okay. I, I would accept that amendment to my motion. So there's an amendment to the motion. Second. There's a second. Any discussion? But we can only do. So one. yeah. We got, do you, one you, are you clarifying or amending? Because we can only do one amendment at a time. Are you? I'm clarifying the CME. The CME would it be a standard one, or did you envision it and it didn't say in your motion in person? This, and I will be again very clear: our CMEs are normally not in person unless that specifically. Had I not have accepted the previous amendment, I would have been okay with in person. But I think since we are going to include. Uh, the CPAP course in Colorado that these would be the standard uh, okay so before us is a an, a, a an amendment to the original motion that's before us it's been seconded any further discussion on the amendment seeing none all those uh, who are for say aye aye all those opposed nay the amendment to the motion passes we go back to the original uh, amendment as sorry the original motion as amended is there any discussion on that Dr. Holliday. I have discussion on that because on the proposed um, order from the staff um, under ordering paragraph number seven, it talks about 44 hours. Mr. Denton um, has made it 72 hours and it's categorized and broken up into certain topics of informed consent, medical record keeping, topic of risk management, supervision of delegates, etc. So I guess my question is, are we going to follow the same proportional um, breakdown of the topics to be to receive CME in. The question. Mr. Denton, is that what you were envisioning with your motion? That was not a part of my motion. Okay, so Dr. Yeah. Holliday, would you like to make that as an amendment to the motion? I, I guess my motion, though, has already been made, seconded, and passed. No, no. the amendment has passed. Yeah. The oh, amendment okay. to the motion has passed. I, I apologize. So as Maybe you need to make clear to me what it is. Yeah. So your motion right now has been amended to specify some of the, uh, an addition to the CME CPAC. courses to CPAC. Colorado. So that's the motion that's before us right now, and we can entertain additional motion, uh, additional amendments to the motion as is deemed necessary. Dr. Holliday. So, uh, my, my question really is just a clarification of what's the breakdown of the 72 hours of the topics to be included in ordering paragraph. Well, I think Mr. Denton had four topic areas that he specified the Normally when it's done like that and you specify the areas, it is an equal division among the topic areas. So the 72 hours proposed would be equally divided among the four topic areas. That is standardly how board staff would draft it with uh, a motion as tendered by Mr. Denton. And I think for clarity, Mr. Denton, would you specify, I believe there were four areas, sir? There were. It was record keeping, diligence, risk management, and ethics. And said proposal will be divided equally. I, I think equally. would would I think when you say diligence is that what like more akin to I think what the physicians would call a risk management topic. Well, or, I had included risk management in that. So if the, I, I think though it would need to be titled risk management because you're not going to find courses that are entitled diligence, and we wouldn't want to. You would not necessarily want to put something in there that was created an impossibility to comply. But you could have risk management with some courses, uh, which by definition, risk management, I think, involves diligence uh, from a professional perspective. With that being said, then, then it would be divided equally between record keeping, risk management, and ethics. May I, may I make a point? Okay, uh, Ms. Atterbury. The CPEP core course is ethics. So you may want to do a different type of unless you just want to have additional CME, which was not in the original. You know, I, I have proposed this and, and going to stand by that proposal unless someone's got an amendment they want to make to it. Um, okay. Dr. Holliday? Can I, Frank, may I offer a friendly amendment to your sure. proposal? Um, on the topic of CME and your 72 hours of CME, um, I would like to make a motion to amend that to include 
equal division of the CME into the topics that would be one, informed consent, two, medical record keeping, three, um, supervision of delegates, and um, four, the topic of uh, patient communication. Second. Is there a second? Is there a second to that? Second. All right, so well, I had an exception the amendment, yeah. No. Well, you don't have to. We're gonna it have to be voted on. So there's a there's an amendment to the motion, and that amendment is before us as it is delineating how we're dividing up the 72 hours of CME credit. That motion has been the amendment to the motion has been seconded. Is there a discussion on the amendment that's being proposed? There is some clarification or question I have, and just for the record, I don't have any op any opposition to the amendment we right. made, but. One of the things you mentioned was record keeping, which was already a part of my original proposal. Right. Um, risk management. Uh, I'm not sure risk management doesn't cover one or two of the areas that you brought up, or does it? So, I totally agree with respect to the supervision, the delegation and supervision issue. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you're adding to my original motion. I've got 72 hours divided between record keeping, risk management, and ethics. So are you adding to, or are you? No, I'm just I'm just making it more clear that this is still 72 hours. Yes. But it include which topic? It's 72 hours that include Dr. Holiday. Why don't you repeat the four areas? So to restate it, it was 72 hours of continuing medical education and the following topics. Informed consent, medical record keeping, risk management, supervision and delegation, um, and patient communications. And are you deleting ethics? Ethics is already in the CPAP. In the CPAP. Ethics Correct. is being managed through yeah. the. So, you, so basically, you're you're offering a substitute uh, list of. So that is be covered in the 72 That hour, is correct. Which I am totally in agreement. Okay, so before us is the amendment to the motion that's been seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment to the motion, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. So now we are back to the motion as amended. Is there any further discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Nay, and I do want to make a very short comment. Go ahead. I Sorry. believe that the staff provided a truly informed and accurate information based on the proposal for, for decision. They did the calculations based on actual violations and the guidelines that are basically associated with what we do every day. Um, I see this is basically throwing those guidelines out the window, all the calculations that they did were for naught, and that's why I voted no. I think otherwise, if we would have continued with how it was proposed in my earlier motion, I would not have had any problem with it. I just wanted to make that for the record. Thank you, Mr. Guardo. So as it stands, the motion has passed and uh, the proceeding on this issue is done. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, board. All right. The next item on the agenda, number three, Mr. Midhat Michael, MD, so number 503-15-4894. All right. You can let me see something. That's all good. Can you see what that is? I'm really sorry about that. Very dangerous apparatus. Uh, I'm really sorry. Okay. Thank you. Let's go for a Let's go for a as we are preparing for the next members of the board, as we are preparing for the next uh, uh, item on the agenda, please feel free to take five minutes to go and grab some lunch and we'll go ahead and proceed with the working lunch.